If you are automating tasks with bash scripts you will eventually run into a premature exit. It may be caused by an error, a change in the environment, or an unanticipated user action. If your script does not deal with exits correctly, you can leave a bunch of junk files in the file system, or worse, potentially sensitive data is left unprotected. Creating scripts that deal with this scenario is imperative to keeping a clean and secure system. In this tutorial we will show you how to use exit traps to ensure a safe exit for your bash scripts. We will discuss cleaning up temporary files, ensuring service availability, and closing ports when your script exits. Let's get started. Trap is a bash built-in command that is used to respond to process signals. A signal is a notification sent to a process to notify it of an event. The most common signal people are familiar with is SIGINT signal interrupt, which is sent when you press CTRL plus C to interrupt a command on the command line. There are a lot of signals available to the operating system. For this tutorial we will focus on exit. The exit signal is a bash built-in and can be used to catch any signal. For all intents and purposes, if you trap exit, the specified command will be executed when the shell process terminates. If you have been around scripting long enough you have probably seen someone use the rm command at the end of a script to clean up temporary files. If the script exits before the rm command runs, the output.txt file will not be deleted. This could get out of hand if the script uses mktemp or a dated filename. It may also be a security concern depending on the contents of the temporary file. Additionally, if you write a long script that has several exit points, you will have to keep track of each exit and ensure you clean up. Using trap to clean up is simple enough. Here is an example of using trap to clean up a temporary file on exit of the script. It is important that the trap statement be placed at the beginning of the script to function properly. Any commands above the trap can exit and not be caught in the trap. Now if the script exits for any reason, it will still run the rm command to delete the file. Here is an example of me sending sigint control plus c while the script was running. This is a much cleaner and safer way to ensure the cleanup occurs when the script exits. Using exit instead of a single defined signal ensures the cleanup happens on any exit, even successful completion of the script. You can use traps for more than file cleanup. Imagine a scenario where you created a script to stop a service to do some automated task. If one of the commands exits during the script, then the service would remain stopped. You can use the trap on exit to ensure the service comes back up and is available. Here we will stop the SMB Samba service to create a tar archive of our share. We will use trap to ensure the service starts, even if the backup procedure exits. This may not be the most glamorous example, but I think it delivers the point. If you run a script that needs a port opened on the firewall, you don't want that script to exit and leave the port open. Use the trap command, here is an example of me letting my kids watch stuff on my Plex server for 2 hours. After 2 hours the ports close up denying service to Plex and it's time to read. This is just a basic example of how trap can be used to ensure the system is returned to an expected state. You can run multiple commands or even complex functions in trap. Create the function, then simply call the function in the trap statement. We will use our previous examples for illustration. Here we are using a function called egress to ensure several changes are made when the script exits. At the beginning of my Linux experience I spent a lot of time dealing with the fallout of premature script exits. The trap command is a simple and effective way to ensure your bash scripts exit cleanly. If you enjoyed this tutorial please like and subscribe to our channel. Remember to hit the bell icon to get notified of new videos. A text version of this tutorial is available at www.putorius.net. A link is provided in the description.